Hi, it's Nigel Barden. Sadly, I'm not around, but do leave a message. And if that's Jim, she's still playing up. You're going to have to take a hammer to her. Tell us a bit about yourself. Well, I used to be a wine merchant, and now I uh, talk and write about drinks. Not just wine, beers, spirits, for a lot, but I'm very passionate about wine. But I want to make it really approachable and, and fun. It's something you have every day. It's you have with every meal. We're talking about wines between five and ten pounds. We're not talking about top expensive clarets, particularly. Yeah, well, you don't really strike me as someone who looks like a wine expert, I'll be honest. Well, good, in the sense that I don't want to be wearing tweeds and plus fours, and you won't be looking around my country retreat or going through my cellar later on, because I haven't got either. But I do like wine, and like most people in Britain, uh, it's something that we, we know a bit about. We want to make more of it and enjoy it. Don't look like a wine man indeed. Get in. All right, Nigel. Well, if you're going to put it like that, I'm all yours. This is my mum's old Rover, actually. Oh, yeah. It's kicking in now. That's turbo. <laughs> And it does rather worryingly when you leave it parked up as a pool of something. Mm -hmm. Today, it's a very, very exciting day, I think, because it's the London Wine Fair, and all the great and the good of the wine business flock to London right. to exhibit their wares, to sample them. And it's not just wines, it's all the affiliated bits, so it's glasses, corkscrews, spirits. At one level, wine is very agricultural. It's yeah. a really basic farming thing, you're growing grapes. And then at the other end, it's this very chic world of champagne and claret. Oh. I'm not having problems with this <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> right, we, we seem to have a problem with the car uh, technical team. Um, They'll probably be here. I know about wine, but I'm not so good with oil. Yeah. <laughs> That's affecting my palate. <laughs> yeah. Um, we should uh, think about it later on when we've had some wine. Yeah. At least I won't worry about drinking and driving. I won't, you know, I will be able to taste some wine. Yeah, true, true. No, we don't, no, don't ask it. <laughs> and um, it's going to get better. Thank you. Here, um, Nigel, are we supposed to follow you? Mm. Nigel? Right. Nigel! One hairy cab ride later, and finally, we arrive at the London Wine Fair. Time for my first glass. Now, it's really crucial what we drink out of. Absolutely imperative. Most of us drink out of vases or big, chunky glasses. There are three very different glasses here. Starting with the small one, this is the one you see all over the fair. These two are made by George Riedel. He's an Austrian. He spent all his life making glasses. Uh, the top of the range ones are hand blown, and actually they're mouth blown, um, apparently, as opposed to backside blown or some other part of the anatomy. Um, but it does make a difference. So uh, these are all three very different ones. A crucial thing also when you go into a restaurant, if they overfill your glass, if they want to fill it up to here, just stop them because the idea is that the wine should breathe. It's getting oxygen in there. It's opening it all up. That's crucial. So uh, have a nose of these mm -hmm. and a, a quick gargle. <laughs> they do taste quite different. Mm. This one's more licorice. -y. This one's got the fruit coming through and the swimming pool bowl here. Obviously, we should have a diving board on the top. Yeah. All very different. Which of those do you prefer? I'd have to say, I'd have to say the one in the biggest glass, actually. Yeah, it, interesting. They're all the same wine. No. B54 we're looking for. Um, the Holy Grail. 
Now, wine can be good for you. It's, it's official. I've got the doctor. He's going to tell us all about it. Doc. Dr. <laughs> Phil Norrie, look, it's on his T-shirt, right. you see. What's up, Doc? You're not only an Aussie, which is fine, um, you're also a doctor, a medical doctor, medical and doctor, you're in yeah. the wine business. Yes, yeah. so I have a vineyard, yeah. and Davis is You've back. got your own vineyard. I mean, wine, good for us, yes or no? Yes, I mean, it's um, the best way to die young as late as possible is to drink wine in moderation because it'll reduce your death rate by up to 50% by reducing heart attack, strokes, dementia, diabetes, cancer, the list goes on and on. It's our oldest medicine. We've been using it as a medicine for the last 5,000 years, and it's our best preventative medicine. Give me a glass. Well, I just wanted to show you some unusual ones. OK. Uh, just because that's the nature of wine. Anywhere in the world, you know, you can get some interesting wines. And they're getting better. The quality, the production techniques are getting better than ever before. Right. For instance, in Spain, these produce a lot of red alcoholic wine. But are breaking right here. OK. Uh, but now they uh, produce some really good fruity kit because they can slow down the fermentation so it doesn't get as hot and sweaty. Yeah. L4. I'm afraid I have no idea. Don't worry, it takes a lovely show okay. though. Great Thank stand. You. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Having blown the car up and yeah. got us lost. Yeah. I I'm think just... I'm on for an event here. Um, so that's A, so it's down here. Here we go, we're here. This is it. This is it, look at this. Wines from the Midwest. How are you doing, you all right? This is Laurie from Wisconsin, and she's got some wine, but I can guarantee you'll never have tried anything like it before. Right. Here you go. Thank you. Swill that. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna swallow that. I mean, that's a big mouthful. It's, it's filled my chest cavity. It's sitting in the pit of my stomach now like a contented Buddha. Is, is it reminiscent of anything to you? It is. It's very, it's very sweet. It's very... It reminds me of my youth for some reason. I don't know what that is. Well, we'll talk about that later on. Mm. Laurie, what's it made from? It is made from cherries. You see, oh, cherries yeah, from the Midwest, Wisconsin, and not all wine has to be made from grapes. Mm. Clever. Come on. So that was the cherry wine from Wisconsin. I have to say, I mean, it wasn't actually one of the nicest wines I've ever had in the world, but it was, uh, no. it was just interesting, and that's... So throw out your window... Very strong, though. The taste is very strong. Yeah, so, funny enough, yeah. there's only about 8.5% alcohol, so right. it wasn't too strong. Now we're going to go afloat. Watch out, no, We're, uh, we're going to go on the river, uh -huh. and I want you to meet a really interesting guy. He's in the wine business, but you, you could think he could be a London gangster. He could, oh. be, he could be the fourth Cray. And so, he's on a boat, is he? Yeah. Well, yeah, doing some deals. Now, my mate here, he's getting into wine. He wants to know more about it. We've been having a bit of a loiter around the fair today, lubricating our larynx. What do you think he should really look for in, in a wine? How should he go about it? Because a lot of Tosh talked, but what, what about the principles? Principles are quite simple. Just satisfy, what you, you know, just satisfy yourself. You know, drink what you like and drink what you want. I mean, what other uh, edict could there be that, um, that people should follow? Whether it comes to second, same with music or art or cars or whatever, you know, it's just purely for you looking for what you want and making enough effort to find out what that is. So that's where the interest lies. Uh, well, a uh, very nice lunch on Cliff's oh, boat. Yes. Uh, we're at the cheese stage. A lot of people get to cheese and they automatically reach for red wine. And I say, no! push that red wine away. Yeah, yeah, try white wine, because sometimes red wine and cheese actually, particularly with blue cheeses, they can make the wine quite tannic and, and, and the cheese doesn't taste that good either. It's not always that perfect to marriage. Oh. Be a bit experimental. This is a Chilean Sauvignon and it actually works really well with the goat's cheese or even blue cheeses. So like all wines, be experimental. Okay. Give it a whirl. Why not? Where are we going? Mm. Yeah, it's good. Good guy, your mate, Cliff. Yeah, looks a bit of a bruiser, but he's a lovely man and he's not all tweed suits and double barrel names. And really, he's what the wine business is about nowadays, as hopefully you've seen on display with some of the characters today. Yeah, yeah, no, he's uh, certainly looked lived in. There's a lot of characters today. Yeah. So, <laughs> what about tomorrow? What you get planned for us? Oh, something of a bit of a surprise. Oh, yeah? Mm, can't say too much. Ah, so, uh, good. Well, how are we going to get there? After getting the car fixed, we arrive at Nigel's secret location. It wasn't quite what I had in mind. Nigel, no, this appears to be some kind of sports stadium. Yeah, this is Adams Park, High Wycombe. It's where Wasps play their rugby. Oh, okay. They're against Harlequins today. It's a big end of season. 
Clash, I have another life as a rope to commentate, but I want to try out some of these wines on the players. I want to taste them tonight. So come on, I am late. So yeah. on. Okay, sorry. Ah, oh, Nigel. I thought you said we were late. Here at Adams Park, Nigel Barden and Alex Codling. Big A. Gone backwards, gotta hurry. It's gone high into the Wickham 10. Unbelievable. Try this. Cheers. That's not a bad drop. Lovely. He's taken there by Ugo Moigny at the wing and he's got time, space and speed and he's going into the corner. What a great try. Another glass. Now, I've got a little bit of an experiment for you. Right. I want you to hold your nose, take some of the wine, uh, because if you lose your sense of smell, you're, you're cream crackered. Right. Uh, and if you people think you've got no sense of smell, they can't taste anything. So hold your nose, Big A. I've got it in my left hand, yeah. Yeah, whichever. Take a, a mouthful of that. Coordination, always important for a second row rugby player. Swallow it, keep your nose held. And then again, you probably won't taste anything. Take your fingers off your nose. The flavour should come flooding in. Mm, Let different. it happen. Tastes a lot different. Yeah. Actually. If you haven't got it, you can't. Most you sensitive sudden, organ you in rush. your body. You get a sudden rush, is it? Yeah, good. Lovely. So you see, rugby and wine can go together. Perfect harmony. And Alex Codling, big A, six foot seven, 19 stone. And I mean, what a pair of nostrils. He's just made for enjoying and nosing his wine. Yeah, that's all good, Nigel. It's uh, been quite a long day, and I'm uh, really fancy a proper drink, if that's all right. Oh, a proper drink, yeah. You mean cooking lager, don't you? Yeah, that's right. 30 seconds later, and all is well. Well, cheers, Nigel. <laughs> Big boy. Yeah, nice to uh, finally have a pint. I must admit, it's been quite a while. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's been a good laugh today, Nudge. Enjoyed the match. What's that you got there? This is an Aussie uh, wine with a screw top on it. This is from South East Australia, and you're going to see a lot more screw tops because basically they're very consistent and you don't get problems with corked wines where the, uh, say, the uh, cork might dry out and you get air in. That's why you should always store um, a bottle on its side, ideally, particularly if you're going to keep it for a long time. Any, any wine of any quality really can have a screw top. It's just really the snob value. I know it's not the same, and I do love the that uh, you get from wine, but um, yeah, life's moving on. <laughs> I got that in the end. I'm so strong. Here we go. Good. Thanks very much. Right, is this when we start um, gargling and spitting into buckets, is it? No, no, the tasting process does look very poncy, I appreciate that. But quickly, the, the reason doing it, you, you, you swill it around like that is to get air into it. It opens the uh, wine up so you can smell it. Get your nose in there. This can register 10,000 or more different smells. It's a very crucial organ. and. Uh, and just think, oh, what is that? Do I get there? Is that black currants? Is it? Is it licorice? Is it? Is it wood? Is it dried leaves? Is it smelly socks? Anything doesn't matter as long as you can recognise those smells. Mm. Don't tell me I've got to do that. That looks stupid. What are you doing? That ridiculous noise. Right. The reason I do that is to get air in my mouth, so I can get it all. The whole mouth can enjoy the, the process, because basically your tongue for start for start this lovely shag pile carpet of a tongue with all these fantastic little tasting bits of it. You've got your sitting room, you've got your kitchen bit, you've got your suite on the tip, you've got your bi the bitter boys and girls are at the back, and then you've got saltiness, acidity on the edges. So that's why you've got to get it all around your mouth. Get some air in, it really opens it up. It's like the idea of swilling it around in the glass in the first place. Let's not get too poncy or posh about it. it it's Wine is not to be adored and... and, and, and Looked at for and, and be sat on for years and years. Can you be nice? Yeah, right. What's going on. Okay. Sorry. Cheers. So I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah. Nice to finish on a beer at the end of the day. As I said at the beginning, it's not Ponzi, it's fun. Go and try as many different wines as you can. Enjoy yourself. Were you still all right for that uh, lift? Yeah, of course. Cool. Problem, Nige? Yes, more. Oh, Nige. Taxi! OK, 
Someone get Les Dennis on the phone. Oh, hot. <laughs> 